I've come to like diode laser cutters a lot, but they have a problem. Well, two problems really. They pump out a load of smoke and you can only use them wearing funky colored goggles. In fact, if you want to be in the workshop while one is running, everything looks kind of funky. When Longer reached out to me and offered me a 20 watt Ray 5 laser cutter, I immediately said yes, but I also knew I'd have to build an enclosure for it. Now, loads of people have made enclosures for laser cutters, but with a laser this powerful, I thought I could do something different. Why not make the laser cutter make its own enclosure? Quick disclaimer, Longer have given me this product for free, but all opinions here are my own. This is 9mm hardwood ply from my local hardware shop. It's cutting perfectly with two passes at 200mm per minute. If I was to use poplar ply, it would cut much faster, like three times as fast. But I'm going to sacrifice the speed for harder wood and a cheaper price. I've designed the enclosure in Fusion 360. The only tricky part here is that the front, back and sides are larger than I can cut in one piece on the laser. So I've split them each into two parts and used the awesome finger joint add into Fusion 360 to join them together. I've got a lower half and a lid which hinges onto it. Well, that's almost all the parts done for the base. I just need some brackets cut out of 6mm ply. This cuts great at 250mm per minute with a single pass. I'm left with a stack of boards which I can push the laser cut parts out of. A quick sand and they're ready for assembly. First, I'll lay some cling film on the bench so I don't get glue everywhere. Then I can join the sides together using a dab of wood glue. As the enclosure is going to be larger than the machine itself, the sides have to be made in two parts, but they fit together perfectly and the finger joints just add to the laser cut aesthetic. The thinner brackets are going to be used for joining this to a base and they get glued in as well. After waiting for the glue to go off, I can now assemble the lower part, again with a bit of glue, and just push them together. Occasionally one might be a bit tight, but it can be persuaded into place with a mallet. A quick check that everything is square, and we've got an assembled lower half. Then it's just a case of rinse and repeat with the upper half. I'll cut out all the parts and then glue them together. This time I'm covering the joints with masking tape to stop the glue from leaking. I'm also using masking tape on the corners to pull the joints tight. Now that the glue on the lower half has gone off, I can add some light baffles to the inside edges. I don't have enough clamps for this, so I'm just using super glue and wood glue together. The super glue sets instantly and keeps the pieces in place while the wood glue goes off. Next, I'll temporarily super glue the hinges in place and drill through the holes. I can then put the top back on and drill those holes out too. The hinges are just attached with M4 nuts and bolts. Now I can put the base on. I took a risk and had this cut to size before I built the rest of it. But due to the miracle of laser cutting, it fits perfectly. It's attached with 12mm wood screws. I was a little bit worried about it coming off, so I may have gone overboard with the number of screws here. A couple more bits get fitted to the top half to hold a window, again using wood glue and super glue to avoid the clamps. Then the inside of the top and bottom get a couple of coats of dark grey paint to minimise reflections from the laser. I decided the light baffles looked a little bit odd, so I charred them slightly with a torch to make them match everything else. Then the outside gets three coats of my favourite finish for plywood, rustic pine wax. I think it makes the plywood look awesome and it's super easy to apply. Just wipe it on and then buff it off 20 seconds later. The window in the top is a piece of orange perspex. 
I'm happy for my purposes that it blocks enough laser light, but I'd urge you to do your own research before selecting the material for the window. It's glued into place with some construction adhesive. This gives it a nice strong hold and fills in any gaps. The protective film is peeled off and the glue cleaned up with a damp cloth. And it's starting to look good, only the electronics left. Now I can stick LED strips to the inside of the lid. I then go round and tin all the ends before wiring them all up. The fan is mounted onto the back using M5 screws. I'm using a standard PC case fan here. And it's at this point that I realise that I'm missing a hole for the wiring to come out the back. I'll quickly add it in with a drill. The holes in the front are for switches, but the plywood is way too thick to allow them to be mounted. So I'm going to relieve the back slightly with a force a bit. The switches are added and the wiring is fixed in place with hot glue. I'm going to do the soldering off camera here, mainly so nobody tells me off for stripping the wire with my teeth. And finally, we have a working fan and lights. I want to mount the standard control panel on the front of the laser cutter, so I'll need to remove it and replace it with a laser cut leg. I've just copied the dimensions of the leg opposite it, modelled it in Fusion 360 and cut it out of 5mm ply. I'm attaching the new leg to the laser cutter with M5 bolts and drop-in T-nuts. I had to drill two more holes in the front for the control panel cables and for the flame sensor, but now the control panel is easily attached with M5 bolts and nuts. All the cables can just be plugged into the motors and switches. This is one of the things I really like about the Ray 5. Everything is standard dimensions and the exposed cables and stepper motors make modifications so easy. Now there's one more hole to drill for the air assist tube. I could have cut these out when I cut the panels on the laser if I'd thought this through properly. You may have already noticed that I had to mount the fan on the rear now to get space for the laser to fit inside the enclosure. I've also 3D printed a shroud to attach a 4 inch tube to throw the fumes outside. It's looking pretty sweet now with the laser inside and the control panel really finishes the front off. Now I can move it to its forever home on top of my CNC cabinet. I've had a couple of diode laser cutters now and I can say the 20 watt Ray 5 is easily my favourite. The laser cuts through plywood like a hot knife through butter and it's letting me do projects that I couldn't even think of attempting with a 10 watt laser. As I mentioned before, the Ray 5 uses standard extrusion dimensions and doesn't try to hide away any of the mechanics. This makes it really easy to modify. For example, if you wanted to make this a lot larger, you'd just have to order some 2020 extrusion and bolt it into place. Unlike the other lasers I've used, which felt very consumer oriented, this feels like a proper tool one you can modify for your needs and repair if it ever goes wrong. If you'd like to build the enclosure that I've made in this video, I'll link the CAD files in the video description. And if you'd like to get your hands on the Ray 5, I'll leave an affiliate link in the description where you can get a discount on its purchase. See ya!